All of this is gonna die. Greetings! Today we're gonna melt some cans. I got a whole bunch of them. And some more. Now you've heard people say cans are a great source of aluminum and cans are a terrible source of aluminum, and they're both true. The problem is, cans are really common. You can get cans. I have tons of them. Myself, uh, I drink a lot of soda. But the aluminum you get from them isn't very good. It's, uh, it's got one main problem, no silicon, and a couple more problems. It's too thin. When you melt it, you get oxidation before it melts. And also, there's a plastic liner inside the cans that stops this super acidic, terrible for you beverage from eating away the aluminum. So half the weight or so is like plastic. It's not even aluminum. So I'm going to show you how to melt it to minimize the loss to minimize the loss of aluminum. Uh, the aluminum will get caught up in the dross, the crud left behind. So we got to get the most amount of that aluminum off the dross so we can save as much. We also don't want to lose it to oxidation because once it oxidizes, it's gone forever. And then once it's melted later, I'll tell you how to make it work a little bit better as far as casting and machining. The problem with the metal is that it's fairly pure. Cans are fairly pure. Extruded aluminum, like heat sinks, that's fairly pure. Sheet aluminum is usually fairly pure. Uh, and cast aluminum, like this, is not. It's got some silicon in it. And I don't mean silicone, like the caulk around your windows, and I don't mean silica, silicon dioxide, which is like glass and quartz and granite uh, and flint to an extent. I mean silicon, elemental silicon, and I got a piece of it here. See, it's kind of glassy, but it also looks like chrome, like chrome glass. So pure metallic elemental silicon. That's what it needs in it. I'm not going to put this in there because this was sent to me by a guy uh, whose name I didn't ask if I could say on the internet, so I'm not going to, but he's a nice guy, and I'm going to use this later with some other metals to alloy up some, some bronzes, but, but yeah, this is what it needs, and you're not going to add this to the cans. Moral of the story is, the metal's not going to have silicon in it, so it's not great, but we'll worry about that later. Let the, Let heat, the heat begin! begin. So here's the deal. As the cans melt, they're going to oxidize before they form a pool, and that's a problem. So the best way to get rid of that is to form a pool first and dunk the aluminum into the pool. For that to happen, you first need a liquid aluminum pool to begin with. So I got this. It's just a bucket. A bucket into which I have put a bunch of uh, aluminum pieces, including this. A heat sink, which is extruded aluminum. This plate of aluminum. And I'm going to melt one of these first to form the pool. Maybe the plate and the... Uh, and the heat sink. It's quite thick, so it's not, that probably didn't focus, it's not going to oxidize as much. So I'm going to end up with a pool. Once I get a pool going, I'll start dunking cans into the pool. And as those build up, they will build up the pool, so the pool is deeper and deeper and deeper, so I can dunk cans into it. That's the plan. Now, one thing to remember, the old plaster sand lining was fairly insulating. This one is not. I just started it, and the outside is already over 100 degrees. So don't touch it. For the crucible, I'm still using the extinguisher. There we go. That's good enough. Perfect. Now that that's heating up, I'll add the heat sink and this plate. Oh, plate doesn't fit through the hole. Plate. And let, let it burn. burn. Add some more fuel, even more fuel. All right, that isn't charcoal, that's bark. Who are they kidding? All right, so, satisfied that it is fueled up enough, let's let it rip on low heat. I see the aluminum's melting already. This stuff's way easier than copper. Take a peek. It's already a puddle. You can still sort of see the shape of a heat sink, but it's pretty much toast. All right, can time. Here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to throw a can in, let it sizzle for half a second, and make sure all the liquid's gone. Then I'm going to shove it into the pool with this and watch it melt. Sizzle, push into the pool. And there, the can's gone. I'm going to try a couple more cans at a time. 
sizzle down into the pool. Whoa, fire. Careful with the fire. I already see a flaw in this system. This pole is getting hot. Also, the hole isn't big enough for some of these oddly shaped crushed cans. Just hoping the fire doesn't alert my neighbors. You know, I like uncrushed cans better, I think. You can plunge them really fast. So fast that my plunging stick is getting ultra hot. Now the dross problem. All of this crud. See, it's very aluminum-y. And I was told, if you keep fluxing, eventually the aluminum will get thin enough that the dross will be mostly pure. It won't have a lot of aluminum trapped in it. Now I'm going to use Morton Light Salt. It's half uh, sodium chloride, half potassium chloride, I think, as a flux. So let's try adding in one table or one teaspoon. Let's get my glove back on. It's toasty in there. And mix. I said mix. Mix that tablespoon. And already the dross looks slightly less aluminum-y. It looks blacker. Okay, let's try just a little more. I gotta get something to hold this spoon with. There we go. Hold the spoon with channel locks. That's safe. So, I have fluxed the crap out of it and here's the dross. It looks more flaky, not so aluminum-y. I so can't believe that actually worked. Wow. That tip was gold. Now let's attempt to pour. Wow, this is heavy. Heavy and slightly glowy. Okay then. Attempt to pour. Aluminum ingot. Burning off the non-stick coating in the pan. Next aluminum ingot. I'm not gonna fill these. Oh, that's got a lot of gunk in it. Next aluminum ingot. I am not going to fill these all the way up because I don't believe I'm going to use huge chunks like that. There, I maybe need to use a spoon as a strainer. There we go. Aluminum ingot. Oh, that got a chunk of dross in it. No! Oh, oh, get out of there, jerk. Quit ruining my metal. Wow. There's so much crud in there. There's no more liquid left that I can see. So I'm gonna put it back in here. Try adding some more flux, see if I can extract just a little bit more out of there. Mix that in good. I think I'm just ending up with saltier, saltier dross. I don't know if I'm gonna get any more aluminum. And the aluminum I get is gonna be so fluxed. But the flux does it makes it more liquidy, makes it pour easier, more flowy, like turning it from syrup into water, kinda. See if that got me a little more. Little more material? Oh, it did, check that out. Some dross fell in there, but we'll live. Any more? See a little bit pouring. Oh, uh, yep, there we go. All right, I think that's about it. So, there you go. How to get the maximum amount of aluminum out of cans. Cool. Now what I'm going to do while those are cooling is, remember how I put this ring on the lid? Well, it's metal, it has expanded. So now I'm going to tighten it down just a wee bit. And it will form tight onto the lid. Getting a little more cracking on the lid. Someone in the comments said I did something wrong when pouring the uh, concrete. And uh, I'm sure I did more than a couple of things wrong. But thank you for the tip. They should be pretty solidified. Yeah. There we go. Now while those are doing that, I'm gonna pour out the dross. See what kind of dross I get. Ooh, ain't that gross. Look at that, it's all black and crumbly. It's not metallic-y at all. That was a good tip from another guy whose name I did not ask if I could say on the internet. But tons of fluxing to get all the crud off. Makes the aluminum flowy, flows off of the dross, and you just end up 
ditching the dross and not losing as much aluminum. Now I'm going to dump this out. Aluminum ingots with burned non-stick coating on them. Uh, here's a clean one. So here it is, a purified can ingot. For reference, here is cast aluminum melted into ingot form. See the difference? I don't. But still, it's important to keep them separate. So I'm going to mark these ones as pure and these ones as cast so I don't mix them up in my pile. And now the aftermath. The foundry's totally fine. Uh, that, that didn't have any problems at all. But I ended up with these. A can ingot. This is pure aluminum, like I said, or fairly pure aluminum. And it looks different from cast aluminum, previously cast aluminum, which is right here. This is a piece that I did earlier, I think out of washing machine cast aluminum parts. Anyway, you'll notice it's quite a bit less shiny. And the surface of the cast piece is kind of kind of dirty. I didn't really clean it up. Seems to have finer lines in it as opposed to the uh, can. Looks kind of crystalline, perhaps. Another thing to notice, the shrinkage. Cast aluminum, cans aluminum. Much, much more shrinkage. Probably hard to see the amount of shrinkage through a video, but this one sinks in the middle, maybe like a sixteenth of an inch or two. This one sinks a full quarter inch. Here, I'll put like a straight edge or something across. See, look at that. Look at that sink. And then that not sink. So definitely more shrinkage with the cans. Now, how do you make it cast better? Well, the silicon is not really something that's easy to add. So you can add copper. Multiple people have told me this. You add like 5 or 10% of copper in with that. But you have to... You have to do the cans first and the ingots to get rid of all the draws because you don't know how much aluminum you're actually going to get. Then once you get the pure aluminum, you can weigh it using one of these nifty things. Beep, that's really loud. Alright, let's weigh this. 180 somethings. Grams. 180 grams, that's what it's set on. Say this, 167 grams. Okay. Now we want to add like 5 to 10 percent ish of copper. Let's see what the copper ingot weighs. 649. That's way too much. Way, way too much. I don't know why I cast this really, really big ingot of nasty, gross looking copper, but it's really too big. So that was kind of useless. I cannot add this to can aluminum because this would need to be added to like 30 of those. And I don't have 30 of those or a crucible to handle it. So let's check out the small one, the smaller disc, 152, that's still like, that's like the weight of this small one. Copper is a lot more dense than, than aluminum. So what you can add are these things, little sections of pipe, 21 grams. So 21 grams, if that's 5% of something, that means the total is what, 400 grams? 700? I don't know, probably 400 grams. I'm going to guess 400. So if I take this... That will be 5% of a total of 400 grams of uh, finished product, which means 20 grams of this plus 380 grams of that. Let's see, how many is 380 grams? Someone check my math. Both of these? Ish? Close enough. That'll put that right around 5 to 10%. So that little amount of copper into this much molten aluminum will help it cast better, a little bit better, and help it machine better. It won't cast as nicely as cast aluminum, but it will help it a little bit more. Because just pure aluminum, I hear, is kind of uh, soft and uh, not great for machining. So there you go. That's how you cast cans, reduce the amount of loss, save as much aluminum as possible, and improve the alloy a little bit for machining with something easy to obtain, like copper pipe, because copper pipe's everywhere. I hope you enjoyed. I'm going to start casting actual things here pretty soon, so stay tuned for that.